Working from home is becoming an increasing occurrence and for a lot of people can be quite daunting, from complicated setups or even IT managers having to integrate their systems with a variety of different employees. In this respect, the HP Elite Desk 800 G5, yes, this little small portable computer that I've got in my hands over here, can be used on its own as a standalone PC or even integrated in an all-in-one solution such as with the HP 24-inch monitor that we've got behind me. Now before proceeding with this video, I'd like to thank HP for sponsoring it. If you'd like more information about the HP products that are mentioned in this video, do check them down in the links in the description below. So without further ado, let's get on to the setup guide and a little bit of an overview of the products mentioned. So first off, let's talk about a product overview and we're going to kick it off with the dimensions. It's 17.7 centimeters in terms of length, 17.5 centimeters in terms of its width and also in terms of its thickness is 3.4 centimeters. It's also 0.96 kilograms so therefore it's actually pretty lightweight meaning you can actually fit it in a laptop bag if you so wish. Now in terms of ports at the front you've got a USB type C and two USB type A ports which is nice to see. You've also got two 3.5 millimeter jacks one of which is a normal headphone jack whilst the other one can be combined with a microphone input so therefore if you've got the appropriate connection you can also use it as a headset. There's also a power on and off button over here too. Now around the back you've got the power inlet which will be needed if you're using this computer on its own. If however you're going to be integrating with a monitor then you're not going to actually need this because power can be delivered via its USB type C port. There's also four USB type A ports as well so in indeed if you want to include peripherals or let's say plug in a flash drive you can do so. It also has Wi-Fi built in, it's uh, wireless AC, however you've got an RJ45 port if you'd rather connect directly to your router and you've got two DisplayPort 1.2 inputs which means this can be suitable for a multi-monitor setup. Now in terms of specs the Elite Desk 800 G5 is available in a variety of different configurations. The one we've got over here has got a ninth generation Intel Core i5 9500 that runs at a base frequency of 3 gigahertz and has got a boost frequency of 4.4 gigahertz. In terms of the RAM it's got two slots available. This model has only a singular slot that's um, filled up by 8 gigabytes of RAM at DDR4 2666 megahertz. Furthermore in terms of storage it's got 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. So now when it comes to using the Elite Desk 800 G5 you can use it on its own so for example you can place it in a cradle like so or you can use it on its own without having a cradle as the uh, there's rubber grips underneath the uh, computer which prevent it from sliding around. If you do want to use it in terms of a more of all-in-one solution what well, I'm going to show you how easy it is to integrate within HP's own 24 inch monitor. What you want to do is remove these plastic slides on the on the side of the monitor. Uh, don't be afraid to rip them out uh, just purely because of how they're attached and then what you're going to do is grab the Elite Desk 800 G5 and make sure that it's placed in the correct way. Now you can see over here you've got a USB type C input on the right hand side of the monitor um, and on the um, Elite Desk 800 G5 you can see the HP logo. Make sure the HP logo is placed towards the top of the monitor and you want to slide it like so. Reason why is because the USB type C input is found at the back of the monitor and this is for its display and indeed in terms of its um, core operations. So first off you just want to align it in and then slide it in and when you slide it a bit more it's going to click like so and then you want to plug in the USB type C input. Now with that now plugged in you can if you want conceal one side of the panel so if you're not going to use the ports found at the back of the computer. However you'll want to make sure that the front panel is still available because you want to power on the computer. Now in order to ensure the monitor is sat up right you can integrate it with a Visa compatible stand if you have your own uh, monitor stand. If however you want to use uh, HP's one it's pretty simple you plug it in from the top and then push down until it clicks into place like so. The last thing remaining is to plug in the power supply cable and you need your peripherals via the USB type A um, ports and of course to switch on the monitor itself uh, from the bottom switch here. So with my cables now routed at the back and it's connected up to a power supply and my peripherals connected up as well it's time to power on the computer. There's a button over here if you press it on it will power on the PC. What you want to make sure is that the monitor is also switched on. There's a little um, a button at the bottom right 
hand side it's illuminated when it's on. Make sure your ergonomics are correct so for example you can adjust the height and indeed tilt the monitor and of course pivot it as well if you so wish and swivel as well and then what you want to make sure is then that you go ahead and set up Windows. Now after you've got Windows set up you've installed all the updates the other thing I'd like to suggest is to go into the monitor's OSD. The monitor's OSD can be accessed through a set of physical buttons and you want to click the one on the left hand side. The button on the left hand side will reveal the menu and you can see over here you've got a variety of different options. Now the brightness is set to zero of course tailor that to your liking but the other thing I would suggest is to leave the color on neutral and the rest of it on its default level so response time on level one unless you're gaming you might want to adjust this setting to get a bit more responsiveness out of the monitor. Other than that these um, modes over here can be used to your to your liking again like the volume this has got internal speakers built in so you can customize the volume through that or indeed via the Windows um, notification in the taskbar and uh, other than that there is not much else to show in terms of the OSD in terms of what you need for the setup so you can close that and not have to worry about it. Now another thing I do also want to highlight is that if you're going to be using this for conference calls or let's say you're going and meeting up with some of the teams on let's say Slack or something like that then there is a um, slider at the top to reveal your webcam. You can see I've got the camera app over here and when I were to slide it open you can see myself over here waving at you. The camera quality is actually pretty good so you can see that you can make uh, conference calls directly from the, um, the microphones that are built in and indeed the webcam and when the webcam is in use there is a, um, a white LED that's indicated by the webcam so that you know that when there is when it's not in use you can close it up and therefore no one can access your webcam. So with that now complete the rest is really up to you in terms of what programs or apps you're going to install from the Microsoft Store for example or indeed via third-party softwares. The other thing I'd like to mention is while it does have 256 gigabytes of storage, the usable storage you will get after Windows installation is around 190 gigabytes. So worth bearing that in mind if you're going to be transferring files into this computer for the first time. As for the monitor itself, it does have built-in speakers as I mentioned, so you can use that for Windows notification or indeed watching, let's say, YouTube videos. If you'd prefer, you can plug in your own USB or indeed 3.5 millimeter jack speakers or headphones if you so wish. The same goes for the peripherals so while I have the HP peripherals and ones that might be provided with this computer you can of course use your own if you have them handy. On the subject of audio the Elite Desk 800 G5 has a fan of course to cool the components. Here it's inaudible if you're going to be using it for browsers or indeed surfing the web. In terms of gaming, the configuration we've got over here has got the Intel UHD Graphics 630, which would be perfectly fine for gaming at Full HD in this respect that we've got the monitor running at Full HD resolution, so 1920x1080p 10 on its IPS panel. In this respect, that's perfectly fine to run um, lower end games but just don't expect to be playing triple A games such as let's say Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So there we have it hopefully you've enjoyed this overview and setup guide to the Elite Desk 800 G5 and indeed incorporating it with the 24 inch all-in-one HP monitor. If you've got any questions do ask me down in the comments below and of course if you like this type of content make sure you give it a like, subscribe to see more from the channel and favorite and share to help the channel grow. Alright I've been totally dubbed take care and bye bye.